So when we think about aviation as regards flying today, it really all starts in 1903. Now the original Wrights took humans on a powered flight in the United States for the very, very first time. Didn't go very high, didn't go very far, but that's where today's history of aviation really starts. So this replica behind us was actually copied from the original Wright Flyer that for many years was displayed in this museum. Eventually it went back to the United States after the Second World War and this replica took its place. So with the Wright brothers, we travel just a few hundred yards and not very high off the ground. How could we make aviation something that was really useful, that could take us places? Behind me is a triplane. It's the AV Road triplane of 1909, one of the very first aircraft to fly in the UK. And then just to its side is another aircraft, a biplane by Samuel Cody. It was a failed competition design for the Army, but it showed you how we were trying to improve the process of flight. So we are now entering the age of the firsts, the really significant aviation records. Over my right shoulder, the actual aircraft that flew across the Atlantic, the first non-stop flights. John Alcock, Arthur Brown, 1919. They thought they were going to land on a nice grassy strip in Ireland, turned out to be a bog. So they rather sank up to their undercarriages, but it was the first transatlantic flight. So we're now at the stage where we want to fly further and faster. Just behind me we have the de Havilland Gypsy Moth that Amy Johnson flew all the way to Australia, the very first woman to fly all of those thousands of miles. And just over there we have the Supermarine 6B aircraft, the world record speed holder in 1931. The designer, RJ Mitchell, went on to design the Spitfire. So we have this new realm of the air. The military, perhaps more than anyone else, were very anxious to go faster and faster. We are very close to two of the most famous aircraft from the Second World War, the Spitfire and the Hurricane. So the propeller could only take us so fast. How could we travel faster still? Frank Whittle, an inventor who had come up with a new type of propulsion system, he was keen to get even faster. The propulsion system was called the jet engine. This is the very first jet engine to fly an aircraft in the United Kingdom. It's named after Frank Whittle, its inventor. It's the Whittle W1. But still, we wanted to travel faster. How could we achieve supersonic flight? So we broke the sound barrier. We even sent passengers at twice the speed of sound with engines like this, one of Concorde's original engines. wasn't the future. The future was using engines like this, the RB211. This is the type of engine used on today's wide-bodied jets, quieter, more efficient. But what of the future? All of this has happened in just a few decades. What happens next? How fast will we be travelling and where will we go?